Association, which later became the West Coast Conference. And then Pacific left in 1971. And here they are back again, Blaine and Ron Berlin leading the Tigers into the tournament. Here's the Siegfried and Jensen Sports Report. Scoring leaders from these two clubs tonight. Right there among the best in the WCC. You're talking about a great one-two punch on that guard line for Santa Clara. These guys can really light it up. And Brandon Clark, an excellent free throw shooter, 86.86%. Uh, Jared Brown, also over 86%. You don't want to foul these guys. Because you can get to the free throw line and they're going to make free throws. And then Brownridge, an outstanding three-point shooter. He's a marksman. 87 of 203. He's got 375 attempts this year. Of those 375, 203 are threes. Mm. So he's not shy. Just a freshman, but he will throw it up from distance. I'll tell you that. Pacific started the season on a tear. They had a very good record out of the gate. And then once league play started, and they started going to different places for the first time, as BYU experienced last year, well, things changed. And they found themselves at the bottom of the league looking up really, really fast. But they've got plenty of talent and, and are quite capable of of making something happen here in this tournament. You know, some of the honors announced this week in the WCC. Tyler Haas of BYU, the player of the year. Brendan Lane of Pepperdine, the defensive player of the year. And there's Brownridge, as you mentioned, Blaine, the newcomer of the year. And Rex Walters, who we'll see on Saturday in a big matchup of San Francisco and San Diego. Big, because I say it's pretty even, and we can't wait to see it. Our first game on Saturday on BYU TV, and we congratulate Rex, Coach of the Year. He did a great job there at USF, and I think that San Francisco team is a team that, when you look at the brackets, every team in the league goes, oh, you know what? I, you know, it's obvious you don't want to play Gonzaga or BYU, the one of the two, but if there's another team on there, everybody goes, oh. San Francisco. And they come in winning five in a row. They're really, really tough. And uh, got great inside play and outside play. Tollison and Dickerson playing so well inside. They're knocking down shots on the outside. That's a tough basketball team. Maybe a team poised for a run. And Rex Walters did a great job with that team this year. As mentioned, that Gonzaga awaits the winner of this one. And looking at uh, Santa Clara, they went 0 2 against the Bulldogs, but when they lose by 14 on the road. And they lose a heartbreaker by two at home back on January 29th. And Gonzaga beat uh, Pacific by three in their or last meeting. And so then who knows what will happen on Saturday night as we look at the full bracket here. We've already got LMU, the upset winner over Portland in that first round game that we just saw here on BYU TV. We had a chance to cover what great guard play in that game for LMU and uh, great defensive effort and they win the opportunity to advance and play BYU and you mentioned that San Francisco San Diego game that 3-6 one we're really looking forward to that that's going to be a fun one mentioned Pacific a tight one with Gonzaga that's not correct they got handled twice uh, and uh, if they win tonight they'll get a shot at them in that third meeting on Saturday night Santa Clara fared a little bit better against those Bulldogs and so Mark Few and the Bulldog Nation looking in on BYU TV tonight to scout out their Saturday night opponent. And here they come, the Tigers of Pacific and the Broncos of Santa Clara. Pacific the eight seed, Santa Clara the nine seed, even though both finished the league at six and twelve. Boy, what a what a night already with LMU rallying from 13 down and uh, knocking off Portland, who we thought really had a chance to challenge BYU on Saturday. And LMU gets it done. We'll see what happens here tonight with the Tigers and the Broncos in our nightcap. I expect this to be pretty physical. Pacific's going to have to play physical. The Santa Clara team is not shy. They do not hesitate to shoot threes. Their top three scorers. That's Brandon Clark, Jared Brownridge, and, and uh, they <laughs> all have over 110 three-point attempts. They're, they're, not, they're not afraid to shoot it up. Brownridge is going to the line to shoot three. Aaron Short picks up his first foul. And so the 86% free throw shooter will step up to the line. And of Aurora, Illinois, our freshman team, newcomer, honorable mention. He's Quite the decorations for this. Well, he's the all-time scoring leader for freshmen at Santa Clara. 523 points coming. And they've had some shooters over the years. Yeah, they really have. I mean, he went 
and um, we mentioned this in the open, he went back-to-back 30-point -back games against BYU and University of San Francisco. Two good teams, and he just lit them both up on back-to-back -back occasions. He has two here to start tonight. Two of three from the line. Santa Clara going to run this scrambling zone where they really get out and try to pressure the perimeter in that zone, extend that zone. Three ball by Gill. He shot 79 of them this year. Not afraid to put it up from anywhere. Brandon Clark out of East Chicago, Indiana. Run on the show here for Kerry Keating. Averages 3.55 assists a game. Great penetration and kick. This is Richard looking for a lane to the basket. And there's a second foul on Aaron Short. Aaron Short kind of playing at home out of Reno, Nevada. Our score box is brought to you by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Clean solutions, a tradition for generations. Brady Industries. And just like that, Aaron Short leaves the game with two fouls in a minute and two seconds. Clark offering a three out of bounds off of Gill. And it stays in possession of the Broncos. Pacific throughout the season has been a bit of rebounding team in Santa Clara. Rebounding margin. Pacific's fourth in the league. And Santa Clara is 10th at minus 3.8. Pacific has to take advantage of that. They can allow Santa Clara, who likes to shoot a lot of deep shots, to get offensive rebounds and second opportunities in this ballgame. They've got to take care of the glass. Reach in foul on Taku. His first. Already three team fouls on Pacific. Now that three ball, and it's Brownridge, and it's five to nothing. As I've been watching him on tape, he has such a beautiful, effortless release to the basketball. He's so good at coming off of a ball screen and pulling up and knocking down that shot. Always in perfect form. Squares up, elbow tucked, beautiful high release. Into the lane and a good looking shot from Samataku out of Tucson. Average is 10 points a game. Had 19 at home against Santa Clara. Five on the road in the rematch. You see Brownridge moving around, number 23. Richard, long shot. Andrew Bach on the run for Pacific. Tony Gill down there fighting on the block and a reach-in foul. And that'll go against Yannicka Tunga, and that's his first. Out of Cameroon. And there's another foul against Santa Clara. There's the first on Jerry Brown. Santa Clara very aggressive defensively. They match up with you, get out on the perimeter, and really pressure the basketball. And that's resulted in the creation of a lot of steals for this team. They average over six steals a game, fourth in the league in that category. Tonga goes out, and Robert Garrett, a seven-footer out of Vallejo, California, checks in. Gill. He's already shot one from out there. Gets it back from the corner. Gill for three. Got it. And we're tied up at five. Well, he's got just such a pretty stroke from out there. Remember, this is a big guy. 6'8", 220 pounds. He's capable of going down and playing down inside and being productive down there. But he's a mismatch because he can stretch that defense and go out and knock down threes. 38% from behind three-point arc this season. Wild shot by Clark. Knocked out of bounds off of Gill. And Santa Clara keeps possession. Well, and a good... You penetrate with the basketball. Bach does a good job of getting to the middle, forcing the defense to double-team, and then kicking it out to the open man. Look at that pretty shot by Gill. 
John MacArthur checks in for the first time. And Jerry Brown checks out. 6-9 MacArthur. Here he is. Up off the glass. Strong rebound by Kelly. to Kelly. Taco with a great, great job of forcing the defense to react to him with penetration in the middle of the key. As soon as he drew the big guy off, he knew right where he was going with the basketball. That was a beautiful play. Offensive foul. And this will go against Robert Garrett and turn the ball over. So this is what happens when you penetrate. Garrett's got to come off of his man to come and help. When you break the defense down off the dribble, good things are going to happen. And Santa Clara just could not recover. They didn't rotate quick enough. Rotations were late. 7-0 run now for the Tigers. Gill draws the double team, passes out of it. Kelly, you see Gill working. Taku drives baseline. From the other corner, Bach tipped out by Gill and a fresh 35 for the Tigers. T.J. Wallace into the game and a Stockton, another one of the young players for Ron Verlin. Good looking move to get open for Taku, but ball into the hands of the Broncos. Wallace is assigned to deal with Brownridge. That's two freshmen trying to keep tabs on each other. Here's Brownridge. No run. Brownridge off a lot of screens. And if, if you're responsible for covering, they get a moving screen there. MacArthur picks up his first. And MacArthur was moving, no doubt about it on that one. The second time they've been caught setting illegal screens. 7 to 5 early on here at the Orleans on BYU TV. The Larry H. Miller dealerships are proud to rise and shout with the Brigham Young University Cougars. And with thousands of vehicles to choose from in person and online, backed by 46 dealership locations across the nation, your local Larry H. Miller dealer is ready to help any fan with their next vehicle. Because whether you're changing your oil or even your car, we're all about helping. We have 46 dealerships in the nation with many brands. And we've been serving auto needs for over 30 years. Larry H. Miller dealerships, driven by you. I was just wondering if there was anything else that brought him back. Something interesting. Someone is talking to the FBI. We have to control this operation. Granite Flats, Season 2, premieres Sunday, April 6th on BYU TV. WCC Basketball is brought to you by DexterLaw.com for help when you need it most. Emergency Essentials, be unprepared or be prepared.com. Bodyguards, the ultimate device protection, bodyguards.com. And by Siegfried and Jensen. Las Vegas, Nevada, we welcome you back into the Orleans Arena. Not too far from the famous Las Vegas Strip. It's 7 to 5, Pacific leading Santa Clara. Second game of our doubleheader here on opening night of the WCC Championships on BYU TV. Santa Clara starting off cool, one for five, just 20%, one of two from the three point line. Pacific much more efficient running their offense, doing exactly what they want. They, they've had a mentality of attacking the interior of that Santa Clara defense. Santa Clara extends that defense. They like to pressure a long way away from the basket. There's some room in there. 
And Pacific's taking them off the dribble. They're passing it inside. And when they're kicking in and getting that defense to, to collapse, they've had open shots on the outside. Andrew Bach at the free throw line. First foul on Evan Rockamore. Rockamore, a senior out of Henderson, Nevada. Foothill High School. And what a career he has had. He's up off the bench to deliver a spark and picks up that first foul. Eight to five now for the Tigers. Rockamore right there in the top ten and career points and assists. This is 134th career game, so he's just been a mainstay for this Santa Clara program. Denzel Johnson also into the game. He gets his first two. Here comes the pressure. Love the trap. And we back into a corner. That's where they have you where he wants. Where they want you. And it, they let him split the trap. You let you got a great position. You don't keep that trap tight. And all of a sudden, you got two defenders that far away from the bucket. Taku gets the two. And Tigers looking for some more. Kelly with the right hand. Strong on the board as it's Hunga who's back into the game. For three from the right side. And he's that's got, Brandon Clark. I'm telling you, these guys don't even hesitate at all. <laughs> Rockmore, Brown Ridge, Clark. They catch the basketball. Their first thought is, hey, do I have like six inches here? Because if I have six inches, I'm throwing this thing up. Tied up at ten. And cool to answer right back is Ross Rivera for his first two. And Rivera has been very good from deep. 41% from behind that three-point line this season. Clark wild on that shot. Into the hands of Wallace. Wallace for three. Fight for the board and the foul. And they'll go against the Tigers. And the foul goes against Rivera, and that's his first. The best way to deal with pressure is to attack that pressure. And that's what we've seen on Pacific so far. They've done a pretty good job with this pressure defense of Santa Clara by attacking it. Nate Cratch into the game now for Santa Clara. With these coaches not afraid to go deep into their bench. This is Cratch taking a step and turning it back over to Pacific. In the earlier meetings, Tigers won at home 80 to 68, and then in the rematch, Santa Clara won at 70 to 50. Three turnovers for the Broncos, none yet for Pacific. So this is the rubber match, and the grand prize is Gonzaga on Saturday. Rivera got a good look at a three. Rockamore. Cratch gives it back to Rockamore. He's made 38 threes on the year. Too strong on that pass. Out of bounds. And the turnover back to Pacific. Rockamore has 578 career assists. All-time leader, Santa Clara. And he has over well, just under 1,600 points, which is 10th all-time in school history. In career, he's above 35% from the three-point mark. And he's over 80% from the free throw line for his career. He's put remarkable numbers over a very good career. Travel. And Wallace took an extra step, turns it over. Just under 12 minutes to go. It's 12 to 10. Pacific leading Santa Clara here on BYU TV. Founded in 1947, Brady Industries is a third generation family owned company with seven distribution locations in five western states and a LEED certified 100,000 square foot distribution center in Salt Lake City. The secret to their success? Their people. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. 
I'm Dave McCann. With the reach of BYU TV, the Cougars are now bigger than ever. A corporate sponsorship with BYU TV Sports provides the ultimate showcase for your company. Featured in up to 140 live sporting events in 2013. You'll benefit from a dominating local presence as well as a national footprint reaching all of Cougar Nation. BYU TV Sports can leverage your business by featuring customized marketing components aligned with the brand integrity of Brigham Young University and the BYU Cougars. Join the team. Go bigger. BYU TV Sports. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon a great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. General Dwight David Eisenhower. Let's take a ride. Twelve to ten Pacific with a two point lead here early on at the Orleans Arena. Let's go inside the play lane. Penetration is paying off for Pacific in this one. Watch Taku's going to take the ball off the dribble, beat his man Clark, and that's going to force the bigs inside to rotate. All of a sudden, you've got a wide open post player on the baseline. This is exactly how you draw it up. Great job, great finish inside by Khalil Kelly. We mentioned Evan Rockamore from the Las Vegas area, and we found his fan club. <laughs> There's all the great accomplishments. Number 24 is done at Santa Clara, and on the list tonight is to get his team into the quarterfinals. He's from right here in the greater Las Vegas area. Went to Foothill High School and lettered in basketball, track, and tennis. That's an unusual combination. Of course, she was a star basketball player, but uh, what about that tennis? That's, that's not your normal combination, right? You need something to fall back on. <laughs> it's a game you can play forever, right? Brown Ridge, no room to get off the shot. He's a strong drive to the basket and a good looking left hand from Jerry Brown. And Brown's first two ties us up at 12. Boog and Bach moving through. Hands it to Rivera. And he'll try it again. Bach for three. Foul on the rebound. Rivera turns with that disgusted look. And he picks it up. And that will be his second, and he'll go to the bench. And brings Khalil Kelly back in. And you see Brandon Clark checking back in, and Denzel Johnson is out. Both teams are a little sluggish out of the gate, aren't they? Now these throughout the course of the season there have been some games when each of these teams have really knocked down shots but over the course of the season the shooting percentage is not great these teams are ninth and tenth in the league in field goal percentage Rockamore looks for two goes up high to get it Gill with a one-handed rebound Tigers answer quickly as Taku strikes again Taku now with six. Brownridge had the first five of the game. And there he gets his seventh. And then ties us up at 14. I, I like the fact that Brownridge, I mean, he likes to shoot three. He's an excellent three-point shooter, but he's not afraid to attack. Look at the field goals, five of 12 for Santa Clara, six of 13 for Pacific. There's a tackle down low, and that foul's going to go against Kelly, I believe. The ball gets deflected right off the bat, knocked out of Samataku's hands. First foul. To penetrate. First foul on Kelly. Gives the ball back to Santa Clara. Turnover situation. Santa Clara four turnovers. Pacific with two. Rockamore finds a double team. Runs it over to Brown. High arcing shot off the glass and in. And I actually, I actually believe that Jerry Brown meant to bank that. I do. I, I do too. I agree. I, I, I think I actually heard him call bank because it looked like he had every intention to do that. Good looking shot. 
Kelly with the right hand went in and came back out. That's exactly the shot that they wanted to generate out of that offensive set. It just didn't fall. Three ball, too strong for Clark. Now we see these teams kind of kick into that attack mode that we talked about prior to tip. Gill with the double team passes out of it. Kelly, he'll go to the line. Chance to shoot some free throws. Kelly 59% from the line on the season. Leading shot blocker and rebounder on this Pacific team. That foul against Nate Cratch, his first. And the first free throw goes off for the senior out of Rancho Cucamonga. Kelly's a veteran guy, experienced. Does a good job of reading defenses inside. When he's down that post and he sees the rotations, he knows where to go and understands where to go to get open. Get easy buckets. He's got five double figure scoring games and four double figure rebounding games this season. Sam MacArthur check in. There's Kelly checking out. One point game. Get under nine minutes. Long shot with a very long rebound. Now Brownridge sizes up the defense, waits for a screen, moves past everybody and throws it up there. Nice save by Brown. Clark goes right back into Brown to reward him. And he's fouled. Jerry Brown will go to the line. 52% free throw shooter. He'll get one and one. We've seen Jerry Brown a couple of hustle, good hustle plays, long rebound. Brown, a senior, spent three seasons at Fresno State from 2009 to 2013. 94 games, averaged a career 5.8 points, 2.8 rebounds. It's a defender of the year for that team. 2013. That foul on Tony Gill. First foul on Gill. He transferred over. He's working on his master's degree at Santa Clara. We see that a lot these days, don't we? Mm -hmm. Guys going playing their last year, working on a master's degree. They can transfer that penalty. I like having that option. Rewards uh, an athlete yeah, you for get, getting his degree, yeah, and it gives your, him an option. You get your degree, you can do what you want. I like it. Six for Brown. Too often it's just the coaches with the options of taking jobs elsewhere and the players got to stay at that school or sacrifice a year of eligibility if he wants to move. So more power to him for those young men to get their degrees. And there's Taku with eight now. And it's 18-17. Rockamore looks back at his coach. Hands it over to Clark. Clark from way outside. We've, we have seen some really deep three attempts so far in this ball game, but I haven't seen one of those deep, deep ones fall in for Santa Clara. Three for Gill. Nifty pass back to him. Gill hits a three. Oh, and Kerry Keating was beside himself. He was talking to his team about closing out on the shooter before the ball came out there. Nobody hustled out to get a hand in the face of Tony Gill. Gabriel Aguirre into the game for the Tigers. There's a shot deep in the corner for Rockamore, and that's a three. Now we're heating up a little bit. 21 to 20 for Santa Clara. Taylor back out to Gill. I was afraid Kerry King was going to cover him that time. <laughs> he's, like, he's right here, he's right here. Get over here, somebody cover him. He almost reached out and touched him as he was pointing to him. And his guys did recover. They contested that one. That time. Rebound by Brown. Rockamore looking for a lane to the basket. Knocked away. There's Brown again. 
Wins another shot attempt, and it's banked in by MacArthur. Okay, the brown one earlier, I'm saying, was on purpose. There's no way in the world that one was on purpose. That was a hard <laughs> bank that was very lucky. Hey, still counts for two. That's right. There's Brown harassing Gill. Taylor for three, and we're tied up at 23. Now, you know, we're just saying a little bit sluggish. Team not, now, all of a sudden, the shots are starting to fall. This is what I expect a little bit more of this in this game. It'll go in spurts, in streaks. Rockamore, you're going out of that double team. Taylor getting in his way. Shot clock is under 10. Rockamore going to settle for three from way outside. Oh, he's feeling it right now. He's got six. And that time, they tried to, Pacific tried to hedge on the screen, but then when they dropped back off, they left a little room. You can't leave him at all. You either have to go over the top of the screen and trail him and, and have your big hedge real hard, and you, you can't leave him. The big can't leave him until the guards come back out there. You leave that guy a little bit of space. He's going to knock it down. He's feeling it right now. Ron Berlin calling a 30-second timeout to settle his troops. Gill pops a three as we've jumped into this cycle of it doesn't matter where you are. If you're open, let it fly, it man. Up. Just let it fly. Rockamore from the corner. And then here, you see, as, they, as, as they're trying to go recover, as Gill's trying to go back, he was a big, he came out, he hedged on the screen. Then he tried to recover, he ran into his own guard and kept him from getting out and defending on that three. There he is, giving a shout out to his fan club here tonight. Santa Clara is four of eight from three, and the Tigers are three of eight. This is a league, as a league, no team's afraid to shoot threes in this league. <laughs> really not. It, it is a three-point shooting league. It really is. D.A. hands it over to Taylor. Kelly, high off the glass. Brownridge comes out with it. Broncos looking to run. And Richard back into the game. MacArthur from the baseline. Up for the rebound, Clark. Fresh 35. And now Clark will settle under five minutes to go here in the half. Pacific's done a really good job of staying on Brownridge. They haven't left to help off of him. He hasn't had a chance to really go off much here in this first half and hasn't had a lot of easy looks. Shot clock, here's 10. Richard up for three. Fight for the board, MacArthur. And again, it's gonna go against MacArthur. And that's his second. Timeout, 4.37 to go in the half. The Broncos are up by three on BYU TV. From the air, the evidence is clear. Platinum roofing, waterproofing, and energy constructs roofs designed to save energy. Platinum employs sustainable products and practices in creating roofs that can reduce businesses' energy consumption and carbon footprints. Cool roof technology employed by Platinum Roofing reflects solar energy back into space, which can lessen the impact of global warming. Platinum Roofing, serving California and the western United States. Proud to support West Coast Conference Athletics on BYU-TV. Individuals suffering from fatigue, inability to lose weight, depression, anxiety, headaches, or poor circulation may have Hashimoto's, the number one cause of low thyroid. Red River Health and Wellness chiropractic physicians conduct extensive medical testing to determine the cause of these symptoms, providing a customized treatment plan for our patients. Red River Health and Wellness has two Utah locations in South Jordan and St. George and in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Learn more at LowThyroid101.com. Red River Health and Wellness. Ready for a warm-up to March Madness? It's time for WCC Tourney Action on BYU TV. Watch Portland or LMU face BYU live this Saturday after the San Francisco-San Diego game. That's WCC Tourney Action live on BYU TV.
WCC Basketball is brought to you by Larry H. Miller, driven by you. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. Platinum Roofing, it's about energy efficiency. And by Les Olson Company, your business empowered. 26 to 23, Santa Clara with the lead with 4.37 to go here in the first half. And Blaine, let's take us inside the play. Well, using a lot of screen action. Watch Pacific here. Gill's going to set the screen and give up the ball. And the defenders go to chase. To, you, they've got to recover. Look at the cushion that is created for Tony Gill as he sets that pick and then floats to the corner. Santa Clara doesn't get to do a good job of communicating. Got to go close. That weak side defender's got to go close on the shooter out in the corner. And Gill with a wide open shot. And we know he can knock that down. 38% the three-point line this season. There he is, honorable mention all-conference. He's better than 38% when he's wide open, I can tell you that. He's already had a good night in Nevada, scored 22 up in Reno against the Wolfpack for his career best. Pacific has been a really solid free-throw shooting team this year, 77.1%. That's first in the conference and seventh in the country as a team. Clark. Oh, that's a beauty. Way up high that off the glass. Is a beauty. He's had big nights against Pacific. 20 on the road and 17 at home. The lead is five for the Broncos. Taku cuts it back to three. Taku now with 10. I've been impressed with Taku's ability to break the defense down off the group. He's got great quickness. Has a great, really good first burst. Great first step. Five of seven from the field for Taku. Clark inside the B. Gets a good look. Kelly brings it down. It's Bach on the run for the Tigers. Lowers his shoulder. That's going to go the other way. Anytime you lower your shoulder, you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And Bach... Picks up the foul, takes us to another timeout. Three-point game, 3.34 to go on BYU TV. Rhodes Cinnamon Rolls. Home-baked and hot from your oven with real cream cheese frosting in your grocer's freezer. Simple things that make life better. Rhodes Bacon Serve. Smith Auto, a proud supporter of BYU TV Sports, sells Ford vehicles. Ford and Smith Auto offer a selection of cars and trucks providing a range of transportation choices, including the Ford Fusion sedan, and the Edge crossover SUV, the Mustang performance car, and an array of trucks like the F-150. Each product line comes with optional packages designed with performance, comfort, and safety in mind. Ford, go further. HP large format printers can print large materials such as signs, banners, and photos. Available at Les Olson Company, your business empowered. So you're at home wishing you were at a BYU game, but you don't really mind because you like instant replay, commentary, and your lip smack and hot sauce. Still, you've got this gnawing feeling that you won in the game. Well, listen up, compadre, because you can have your game, eat your nachos, and do more than comment on that Tweety thing. It's time to go to BYUTVSports.com and be part of the action anytime, day or night. Just get online and create an account. Don't sweat it. It's really fast. BYUTVSports.com. Get in the game. 28 to 25, Santa Clara with a three-point lead with 3.34 to go in the first half. Coming up at the half... We're going to talk to this guy right here, Evan Payne. What a night he had for LMU in our first game of the doubleheader. Lions upsetting Portland. And we'll get his take on this dunk. And at 6-2, he shows he has some hops. And also what he thinks of the rematch with BYU. That's coming up. Evan Payne at halftime along with stats and highlights with Spencer and Kristen. Evan Payne had another one just like that one, a run-out throw down in the first half. He can really get up off the floor. <laughs> look, Max good. Look how relaxed Max yeah, is now. He looks a lot more relaxed than we talked to him before the game. He was just telling us, I just don't have anybody. Hey. You know, we don't have any guys. I don't know how we're going to do this thing, but he knew he had 
two super guards. He's not sitting. Evan Payne doesn't have a lot of island. friends here, does he? He's got his two assistants, and that's it up there. In the seats will see Max Saturday afternoon as LMU and BYU play on the BYU good news TV. for these teams in, in this first round. With, with a 10-team format, there's a rest day. And he is shorthanded, and he had, those guys had to play a lot of minutes tonight, but they get a rest, and they don't have to play until Saturday. I like that. Give them a fair opportunity. Shot clock's at five. Rockamore to beat the shot clock for three. Off the front end. Boy, look at that. Active rebounding by Atanga. Rockamore for another three. Tip back out. Well, offensive rebounding has really been the story. That's the seventh offensive board now for Santa Clara. Now Clark pops a three. Well, they, they haven't taken advantage of this one. That would be number eight. And this one's going to go against Taylor, or is Kelly. Kelly can't believe it. So a foul instead of an offensive rebound. But it, that has... The offensive rebound, the ability to go get second chance opportunities has made all the difference in the world for Santa Clara. They're shooting 41.7% to Pacific's 50. But the difference and the reason they've been able to go out in the lead in this one is because of the rebound of the basketball. They've got five more second chance points than Pacific. The Tanga 52% free throw shooter. And so no harm done to the Tigers. Kelly can't, still can't figure out how he was called for that foul. Short picked up those two quick fouls and went to the bench. He's back in now. Trying to find his rhythm. And have Wallace set to check back in for Pacific. It's a three-point lead for Santa Clara with 2.21 to go. Gill is at the free throw line. As Brownridge picks up his first foul. And Pacific, who's really very good from the free throw line. It's just two for five to start this game. As Tony Gill toes that line. 72% free throw shooter. There's uh, Spencer and Kristen getting ready for our half. He's got his report. makeup brush going. <laughs> That's good because he'll need it when he goes for his other job at Cirque du Soleil later yeah. tonight. Kristen needs to give him some makeup tips before he goes over there and is in. Um, is it all that he's in? He's in all. Yeah, he's in all. Look at the Bellagio. Eight points for Gill. One point game here in the latter stage of the opening half. Rockamore dribbles past the double team, gets the shot to go down, and the chance at a three point play. How good has Evan Rockamore been? In this first half, he's been on attack. We've seen him not hesitate to shoot, sh you know, threes from deep. But he's also, when they push up on him, they go in and attacking, draws the contact there. Gill picks up his second. And that's a great shot to have the presence in the body control to come off of that contact and be able to still get a shot off and get it to fall. Free throws good. And the Broncos are up by four. And they pull out of their full court. Defensive setup and back into a zone. This will test the shooters for the Tigers. Zone. Taku got a good open look. Out come the Broncos. Clark. Good defense there by Wallace. Now it's Bach. He loses it. Atanga pulls it in. Gill tips it to his teammate. We're right back at it. Atanga with the block. Here come the Broncos. Brownridge for two. That's the first decent look that Browners has had in this ballgame in a long time. Under a minute to go. Look at Wallace. Out of control, but he's going to get two free throws. 
And uh, there on the floor is a Tonga. Let's see here. You be the judge on this one, did, Blaine. Did we not say this was going to be physical? Uh, Tonga looked like he was in pretty good position to me, and they're in plenty of time. Second foul. And both, of, both of these teams play an attack. We talked about that at the top of the telecast, and we're certainly seeing that in this ballgame. Not shy to shoot. They'll throw up threes, and they'll put the ball on the floor and come right at you. Wallace, 66% on the season. From the stripe, gets the first to go for his first point. More substitutions. Cratch returns. Tim Thomas is in for Pacific. Gill and Atanga go out to the big boys. Go to the bench just so as to not risk another foul before halftime. Wallace. Looking like a pure shooter there at the line. Gets them both to go down. It's a two-point game. And Bach leaves. We said we're going to drop back in to a zone defense here to end the half. Brown Ridge. Here's Rockmore deep in the corner. Brown Ridge open for three. And in it goes. That's the tough part about trying to zone up Santa Clara is they just they're saying, oh, you, are you actually daring us to try to shoot a three over the top? Yeah, we will not hesitate to do that. And credit to Brandon Clark on the baseline with the vision to spot Brownridge for three. And how many times have we seen that in this ballgame on both sides? Great penetration, draws the defense in, then you find the open shooter on the opposite side. Great job by Clark that time. Brownridge just makes it look effortless. 38 points Saturday at Pepperdine. You could say he's coming in with some confidence. Those uh, 38 points, the most since Steve Nash scored 40 against Gonzaga back in 1995. He was pretty good. Full day ahead tomorrow in the quarterfinals. This is the women's bracket, Pacific and Portland and Pepperdine and BYU. And the nightcap, top seed Gonzaga in San Francisco. San Francisco won at the buzzer earlier today. And then St. Mary's in San Diego. All tomorrow, all live right here on BYU TV. And remember, those times are all East Coast time. You folks in New York, we want, we're trying to plan your day. That's right. Shot clock's off. And the Tigers are going to settle for the... Final shot of the half. I'm eager to see what Evan Payne has to say coming up here at halftime. Block looking around. Taku's had the hot hand. Ooh, left open in the lane. Forced it up maybe a little early, Blaine. Broncos are going to get one from half court. And halftime arrives at the Orleans Arena, and it's Santa Clara 34. And Pacific 29. Taku and Brownridge each with 10 for their respective clubs. As they head to the locker room, we'll kick it upstairs. Spencer and Kristen and their interview with LMU's Evan Payne. Halfway home here, Santa Clara and Pacific. Broncos by five here on BYU TV. What if you could see your kids get home safely without actually being there? Or turn your lights on from somewhere else? Welcome to Xfinity Home from Comcast, the total home security and home control solution combining professional monitoring with rapid response in an emergency, plus text and email alerts, remote alarm and light controls, and remote video monitoring. This is home security reimagined. Xfinity Home from Comcast. Learn more at Xfinity.com slash home. The choice is yours at Chuckarama. It's the scones. They're crunchy on the outside and soft in the inside. I rip it apart, stuff honey butter on the inside, and then it drips all over my fingers. <laughs> the choice is yours at Chuckarama. We give back as much as we receive to our teammates, our coaches. To our fans and to our sports. 
to our teachers, our schools, and our communities. Giving back, it isn't just something we do, it's who we are. Ready for a warm-up to March Madness? It's time for WCC Tourney Action on BYU-TV. Watch Santa Clara or Pepperdine face BYU live today after the Pacific Portland game. That's WCC Tourney Action live on BYU-TV. Think of the greatest story you've ever heard. Maybe it's factual or perhaps it's fiction. Regardless, there was a hero, someone who stood for something against all odds, a person who could have turned back but chose not to. These are the stories that mean the most to us, the ones we name our children after, the ones that change us. These are the stories that show us there is good in the world. When you support BYU TV, not only are you standing for the stories that really matter, you're helping to write a new one. One half down and one more to play on the opening day of the West Coast Conference Tournament version 2014. Welcome up high in the rafters of the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas to the halftime show here on BYU TV. Alongside Kristen Kozlowski, I am Spencer Linton, and we are doing it live from Las Vegas. The 19th Santa Clara leads 